Dear Lord, thank you, as always, for just the opportunity to, to be able to come before you and, and thank you for giving us the access to come to you anytime. Help us to never take that for granted. Thank you for uh, reminding us through John that, that you have already won the battle. I know some people just on this list in this room that are listening need to see a victory, dear Lord, but just help them to know that, that the battle's already been won and that firm foundation has been laid in your love and, and that sometimes you provide unique and interesting opportunities to, to show us that and, and to show other people that through whatever the circumstances are. I pray for healing, dear Lord, for, for the people that need it. I pray for comfort and peace that only you can provide. I pray that people can see these circumstances for just what they are, and that's just opportunities for you to show up. I thank you for this time that we get to gather and, and go to you on behalf of other people. Uh, help us to never take that for granted and, and to remember that we are made for relationships and made for each other and made for you. I love you in your name. Amen. All righty. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, John. All right, so two Wednesdays to go. Oh, that's mine. I get to keep that. I don't need this is what I don't need. Um, two Wednesdays ago, I was in Psalm 100, and I read the psalm, and, and the title of the message was uh, God is God. And uh, the next two Sundays, I'm going to be sharing essentially from a topic that is... Um, mm, uh, well, the title is Surrendered, Bowed, I mean, Submitted, Surrendered, Submitted, Bowed, Surrendered. Submitted, Bowed, Surrendered. And the idea being that, you know, we have to acknowledge the fact that, you know, we have to submit, we have to bow, we have to surrender um, to the sovereignty of God. God is God. We live in a world in, in a society, and, and quite honestly, it's always been this way. So, I mean, this isn't new to us. Um, the idolatry that we see throughout history, people prop up their own idols, okay? They set up their own gods. Now, either they do it intentionally, like just, just flat out, you know, pagan worship and that sort of thing, you know, worshiping uh, stone figures or, or golden calves that happen to just walk out of the fire as you know uh, Aaron said to Moses back in the Old Testament or or maybe it's simply by our actions we revere things in our lives to the point that they become gods uh, we treat them like gods we worship them like gods and so tonight I want to dig in a little bit deeper on this thing uh, uh, of the God is God because you know before I submit now here you go my mom will tell you I'm hard-headed I know that surprises you, right? Y'all saw me as completely submissive and, and uh, you know, just sort of. But, but mom will tell you, I was a hard-headed child, and, and she prayed that I would have one. Okay? Um, and so, he's not really. But, uh, but I don't give in well. Okay? I certainly don't give in when I think I'm right. Okay? And yet God is sovereign, and God is always right. And there are times when God points out things into our lives that we need to acknowledge and admit that, all right, God, my will, or, or how about this? I'm wrong. How difficult is that for us to say? To go before the throne of God and just go, you know what, I was wrong about that. That, that, that was all about me, God. That, that, that was just my doing, all right? So, so I tell you, I mean, two weeks ago it was God is God. This week it's just He is, all right? So I want to look back at Psalm 100, verse 3, uh, very simply, and, and we're going to go back into Psalm 100 a little bit. But verse 3 says, Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are His. His people, the sheep of His pasture. All right, listen, God is, Okay? Uh, uh, philosophers will tell you that this is one of those steps of affirmation. We have to acknowledge and accept that God is. He just is. When, when Moses asked God, who do you, 
who do I tell Pharaoh sent me? And, 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 God, and God said to Moses, I am. I am. And, and so when you see I am, we know in English that, that you start, um, start that English process where you got the first person, the second person, and the third person. That's a conjugation. That's what that is. See, conjugating a verb, I am, you are, he is. So God is, I am. That is, that, as a proper name, that's that tetragrammaton in Hebrew, which is four Hebrew letters with no vowels because they didn't write vowels, which messes up English people, Okay. So you got this four-letter representation of the identity of God, which was so sacred to the Hebrew people, they wouldn't write it. They took those same four letters and devised a different word and, and put vowel pointings in it later, and the word they write throughout the Old Testament is Jehovah. But the word is Yahweh. And they wouldn't write the word Yahweh, so it became Jehovah to them, right? So when you look at this statement, acknowledge, acknowledge, know it. Know this, right? Not, not, not just know it, but, but accept it as the truth. This is a statement of God is. Know that God is God. And this God, the first, where the Lord, that's the word Yahweh or Jehovah, know that Yahweh is Elohim. Now, see, Elohim means something not only to the Hebrew people and the Jewish people. It means something across all the Semitic languages. Okay? All across that area at that time, Elohim is this representation of the Creator. So, in Genesis, where it says, in the beginning, Elohim. Okay, so so the Lord Yahweh is Elohim. Now, why is that statement so incredibly important to to the psalmist, but also to you and I? Yahweh is a personal name. It's a it's a, a relational representation of God to his people. I am. You can count on me to be the I am, is what God's saying. I am with you. I am for you. I am beside you. In spiritual language, God is saying, I am in you. Okay? So, so Yahweh is your creator God. Yahweh is Elohim. Acknowledge that. Know that. Now, here you go. There are those who would say, prove it. Prove it. If you can make an argument to me that forces me to, shall we say, submit or surrender, I will. Well, can you prove, I don't even answer this, because can you prove that God is? No. You can't prove it. That's why the second part of the first point is, is God is and he may be known. You can know God. Now what does that represent in this context of know that the Lord is God? It's a faith statement. See, it's an affirmation of my faith. I have surrendered Everything. Because God is. Alright, so that's Sunday's message. Y'all don't have to come. But when you say God is and he may be known, these are simply the two affirmations of what we call faith, some call religion. God is, and I can know him. 
Okay? So when you look at those two things, uh, the existence of God is not something we can prove, but the faith that we state is what we live. I can say, I know God, but if I don't live like I know God, then I'm not actually making a faith statement in my life, am I? See my point? All right, maybe you don't. I'm sort of challenging myself in this. All right, so the point, too, is I can please. I, okay, easy question. Ready? Who wants to please God? Of course we do. We want to please God. So, so I flip over, and I did this two weeks ago. I mentioned this verse two weeks ago. Listen to this one. Hebrews eleven six says, Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that God in Greek is theos, or theo, right? Still represents that creator God image, that, that identity of the creator God. It is impossible to please God. Now listen to this. Since, now without faith it is impossible to please God, since the one who draws near to him must believe, acknowledge, know, surrender that he exists. Now, I'll go back to the New American Standard translation because I like it best. This is the CSB translation and that's that's what I use these days. But here you go. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he is. He is. And that he rewards those who seek him. Now, welcome to Connect Wednesday. Okay? So in just a minute, we're going to break up and talk about a couple things. Okay? Little groupings. I know we got one, two, one, two, three, four pastors in the room. I think any more? Okay. Anyway, all right. So here you go. Listen, it's without faith it's impossible to please God. Since the one who draws near to Him. All right. So what does it say in Psalm one hundred? When you get down to after verse three, it says, "Enter His gates with thanksgiving." And his courts with, I didn't give you this one, David, don't worry about it. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. What is the psalmist telling us to do? Come close to God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Come near to God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God since the one who draws near to him must believe that he is. And that he rewards those who seek him. So here's the challenge for tonight and and, and sort of the encouragement to you. And, you know, I, I, I'm the, yeah, just about everybody in here knows me. So here you go. I have to stay on schedule. Okay. I have to do first things first. I have to keep the main thing the main thing. I have to operate with a sense of order. Now, not because I worship a clock, not because I want things my way, but I do want things my way. Um, if I don't keep an order, I I spin out of control into chaos. Okay? So here you go. Here's what happens. When I get up in the morning... There are some things that I buy, and I'll say, I'll even go ahead and and confess this. I do it legalistically. I do it every day, every time, the same way. Because that's who I am. If I take a few days off, I might take a year off. You see what I mean? So I have to do things by structure. So here you go. Since the one who draws near to him. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Everybody think a moment. What do you do to draw near to God? How do you? Now, guess what? I can ask Scott that. Scott can have an answer for Scott. 
call Scott and Yahweh or Scott and Abba Daddy or Scott and whatever he wants to call him. Uh, I grew up in one of those churches where when the deacons prayed before the offering, it was in King James English. They put THs on the end of their verbs. They just did. Now, can I just be honest with you? That's not offensive, but I look at it and I go, why? Well, because they've been reading the King James Bible all their life. That's all they knew. That's all they had. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not criticizing it. But for the little, you know, 10-year-old kids sitting on the second row right there kicking the back of the pew, um, and, you know, Mr. Purefoy gets up and says, you know, all the flowery land. And I'm like, I don't think I understood what he just said to God. Right? Because I'm 10 for one thing. So when I ask Scott, Scott, how do you draw near to God? That's Scott's story. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're all going to sit down around Scott and say, Scott, how do you draw near to God? God? Scott says, well, I do one, two, three, and we go, that's wrong. Right? No, it's not wrong. How do you draw near to God? I mean, the psalmist says, enter his gates and his courts, thanksgiving and praise. How do you make it? Now, I'm going to go ahead and say it. You don't have to be OCD like me or ADD like me, either one. My OCD is always in battling with my ADD. But here you go. How do you practice drawing near to God? Our question tonight. That's the question tonight. What have you done on a regular basis in the last month, the last week, today, or the last hour. I had a great conversation yesterday afternoon at 3 o'clock with a 30-year-old young lady sitting on the front porch of their family home. I said, tell me how you spend time with God. So she began to tell me. What she does on a daily basis to draw near to God. Now, probably if I hadn't already put this outline together on Monday, I wouldn't have asked her that question, but I wanted to. right, so I did yesterday. So how do you make it a practice to draw near to God? Okay? And when you get in your little groups, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just you and the personal Yahweh or Abba Father or Elohim or or whatever, you know, whatever you get close to God with. Because there are times when I'm like the 10-year-old again, I go, Daddy, I need help. And my heavenly daddy says, I'm right here. I never left. I've always been this close. See? So, he is. He is. Because Sunday... When I start sharing the submitted, obeyed, and surrendered, some of us on Sunday are going to be challenged as to whether or not we're willing to be submitted, obeyed, or bowed and surrendered. Right? You know why? We grew up in a culture that says, you're not the boss of me. Right? How do you draw near to God? Pray with me, and then we're going to break up. I'll let y'all do this naturally. I'll Let's say, uh, Scott's up here. I'll get over here. Nick, you go to that back corner back there, and we'll just let y'all gravitate to whichever group you want to go to. Okay? Instead of assigning y'all groups, we're going to let you pick groups. Scott's going to be on this corner. I'm going to be on this corner. John's going to be in that corner. Nick's going to be in that corner. God, thank you. God, I just praise you. You want us to come near. You want us to come close. You want us. It's not that you need it. But you want for us to have that intimacy with you. 
And God, we read in the Word the psalmist and, and David and Moses and, and Paul and, and Peter and, and all these people that, that their lives are testimonies of that nearness, of that closeness. And so God, help us to draw near and know that you are. And that you reward those who draw near and seek you. God, what do we do? Show us how to draw near. And God, if there's someone here tonight that's never drawn near, maybe they don't know Jesus at all. God, tonight I pray that they would find that way to Jesus and draw near. Thank you, God, for Wednesdays. Thank you for giving us some, some opportunities to, to get better acquainted with each other. But God, help us to learn, God, that, that the relationship with you comes first. And then let us help grow relationships within the body. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.